Okay, so today, yesterday we learned about creating logarithms, right? Changing a, an, a, an expression or an equation that was in exponent form into a logarithm. And today we're going to learn how to solve those equations when they're already in logarithmic form. Okay, so let me sh talk about what that means. You're going to have a log with some base some argument, and equals something. And if you'll remember that that format, again, is an equation because it has an equal symbol. So that format can be changed to exponential notation. So it's just b to the x equals y. Remember, these two pieces simply flip. The base becomes big B, <laughs> and the logarithm goes away. So what we're going to do to solve these is very simple. First, change the log to an exponential. So change log to an exponent. Okay, And keep in mind, <clears throat> many times you can just do the math, depends on the, the format and where the unknown is. If your unknown is your base, if your unknown is your y, if your unknown is your x, it's going to depend on how you solve it. But if you keep this in mind the entire time, it makes the process pretty easy. Remember that a logarithm really means what exponent on b would give why? So if you keep that question in your head the whole time, then it's fairly easy to solve these. And again, it simply depends on where the exponent is. Okay. So after you change it to, a, to an exponent, <clears throat> the next thing you need to do is think about, can you simplify the exponent? In other words, no fractions, no negatives, etc. See if you can make it a little easier for yourself. If you can turn a fractional exponent like 1 half into the square root of something, that's generally easier than thinking of it as a fractional exponent. You also need to remember, think about those laws of exponents that we talked about. These are good clues for solving. Anything to the zero power equals one. Anything to the first power equals itself. Anything to a fractional power, oops, is always a square root or a cube root, etc. depending on what the n is. Uh, anything to a negative exponent turns something into a fraction, right? So think about those types of things. Also remember, that a fraction and a decimal are the same thing, right? So that part, if it's a decimal, that means you started off with a negative exponent, okay? And you might have a combination of things like that. So let's look at some examples to see how this works for you. So on page 24 in your Walker book, we'll just look at number two. We have log base 2 of y equals 7. Now, these are one of the easiest ones to solve because you're looking, you've got the base and you have the exponents, so all you have to do is really evaluate it, okay? And you can use your calculator to evaluate the big ones. So what we're going to do first is change the logarithm to an exponent. Remember, the base is 2, exponent is 7, and equals y. So all we have to do in this case is find out what 2 to the 7th would be. So 2 to the 7th, 2 times 2 is 4, times another 2 is 8, times another 2 is 16, times another 2 is 32, times another 2 is 64, times another 2 is, I don't know, what's 64 times 2? How about 128? <laughs> So that gives us 
128 equals y. And the equation is solved. Okay? And again, you can just check that with your calculator due to the seventh power and see if that's right. I'm not making any guarantees. Okay? Four. We have log base 10 of y equals zero. Now they're being nice to you because usually you would see this written as simply log base y equals zero. Because it's base 10, they assume it's there, but they're being nice and putting it in there for you. So remember, 10 to the zero equals y. That's a really easy one because anything to the zero power is simply one. Uh, so let's look at number eight just for kicks. Log base 25 of x equals negative one half. Again, simply change the logarithm to an exponent. So it's 25 to the negative one half equals x. It doesn't matter which letters they use, so they're putting x in place in where they were using y. It just means solve for the variable, whatever letter you have. So it's negative and it's a fractional exponent. So you have two cases here we have to deal with. First of all, let's take care of the negative bit. Changes it to 1 over 25, all raised to the 1 half power. Raised to the 1 half power means the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom. The square root of 1 is still 1. The square root of 25 is 5. So let me write that a little neater. x is equal to one-fifth. So those type are fairly straightforward. It gets a little more complicated and you have to do a little more thinking when the you're looking for a different piece of it. For example, on the next ones, we're going to be looking for the base and we'll have the argument and the exponent. Okay? But again, keep that question in mind. What exponent would you put on the base to get that particular answer? You're still going to say, change them to an expo exponential form just like we did. So even though they're logarithmic equations, we actually turn them into exponents to solve them. So let's look at number two. Again, I'm on page 25 this time. So we have log base b of 81 equals 4, which becomes b to the fourth equals 81. So your job is simply to tell me what exponent I'm sorry, not exponent. <laughs> what number raised to the fourth power equals 81? Okay, and that's a pretty simple one because we know that it's going to be 3. So, this one is a, less, a little less about doing the math than just thinking it out. Okay, so the exponent that you would raise, so you can do the math if you want to with your calculator because the ex, finding out what exponent on a number is the same as taking that root of the number, and you can do that with your calculator. The fourth root of 81 is 3. So if you want to know what the exponent is, take the root. All right, so uh, number 6, log base x of 1 equals 0. So that becomes x to the 0 equals 1. Well, <laughs> anything to the 0 equals 1. So that one is a little bit of an ambigu ambigu ambiguous. Oh, ambiguous. There we go. Not language. So literally any value would make this true. Because anything to the zero power would always equal one. It doesn't matter what value you choose. So you have an infinite range of values. Okay? So in, back in Texas, we would answer this as 
all real numbers. Okay. All right. Uh, look at something like number eight. Looks really bad. Log base x, one tenth equals negative one half. So that means we're taking x to the negative one half has to equal one over 10. So just think about what that means. The negative exponent really means that it should be one over x. Oops, sorry, all raised to the one half power. Eraser there. Okay. Equals 1 over 10. So that means that we're taking the square root of these. So it says the square root of 1 over the square root of x should equal 1 over 10. Well, just think about the square root of 1 is 1, so that just stays 1, right? The square root of x equals 10. Well, the only number to make that true is. 100. So your completed answer, 1 over 100. Sorry, I've misled you a little bit early in the morning. You're going to get your 100. But this negative gives you the fractional answer, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take the negative root do it like a square root with a negative exponent sorry I don't know what I was thinking so just move this over and turn that into a root an exponent becomes a root so x equals the square root of 1 over 10 while well, you're undoing that, first of all, it's a negative, so that's going to turn it into the square root of 10 over 1. And what would be, or the square of 10 over 1, and the way to do that, the only way to get the square root of 10, or the only way to get a 10, is to have 100 over 1, which is just plain old 100. Now, I stuffed up the explanation a little bit, but... Hopefully you can see it. If not, we'll do it again. Email me if we have a question about that. <laughs> All right. So let's look at what happens when you're finding the exponent. Again, it doesn't change much. You're just going to be changing those logarithms into exponents and then finding out what exponent you would use. So log base 10 of 10,000 equals x. This is where those what exponent would you use really comes in handy. 10 to the x equals 10,000. What exponent would you put on a 10 to turn it into 10,000? So you need to be adding three zeros. 10's easy to use because however many zeros you're adding is going to be the exponents. Let's see. Let's look at number six. Log base four, two equals g. So what we're going to do is change it to an exponent. Oops. So it's four to the g equals two. Well, the only way that you can get from a big number to a smaller number like this is if you're taking a root. So we know that this has to be a fraction. And what root would you put take of the four of four to get a two? It would be a square root, and an exponent that's a square that's equal to a square root is an exponent of one half. So g equals one half. So this is just a case of know your exponent rules. Okay, and just keep in mind that it's going to be a matter of remembering those rules and using them in the right order, <laughs> and uh, don't make mistakes like I do. All right, there you go.
Then when we come back, what we'll do is talk about how to solve when you have start with an exponent, and we're going to use logarithms to solve exponential equations. So now you should be ready to do the homework from pages 24 through 26.